What's up, everybody? Welcome to Adventure Awaits. Today, our happy asses are here at the Buffalo Museum of Science for an exhibit on the guitar, medieval to metal. So let's go in and check the shit out. Now this is almost, this is almost too much. I mean, I just walked in here and the first thing they hit you with is the beaded hats. Like, from, my eyes are still adjusting to being inside with a mask on, but they're, they're from me. They're definitely beaded and they're definitely hats. Cannibal! And, uh, yeah. Whoa! Nice! See me! Lots of different types of plantas. <laughs> Ooh, nice! So this is a... A that of the nativity scene. Wow. Definitely looks to have like an Asian influence. I think, yeah. Now welcome to Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. This is actually an orator's stand. In the tiki 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 room, in the tiki 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 room. Aloha! Now this is amazing. You just don't see too many red ass baboons anymore. But when I do take off, I take off like a red ass baboon. <laughs> Seed bugs. Holy crap. I think I've seen those in my room. I've definitely seen this dude in my nightmares. These are seagull skins, I suppose. Wow. So, so let me say a little something before we before we delve even further into the Buffalo Museum of Science. Back in the 70s and 80s and 90s, it had a nickname. And it was called the Buffalo Museum of Taxidermy. And this is an example of their fine taxidermy, but this doesn't even begin to scratch the surface. We're going to see some taxidermy today. Like this the work that they put in to these pieces, especially these birds. Like I know a little bit, and I know birds are very, very small bone structure and very difficult to recreate. And an action pose like that, like a pose that, that provokes interest like that is just very excellent work. This guy, used to scare the crap out of me when I was a young thing. <laughs> and he still, he still has that look at, I remember you, motherfucker. <laughs> I used to scare the shit out of you. What do you think of me now? <laughs> and there's, it's another, another very cool action pose which is what taxidermy strives for, to, to recreate the animal in life, not just to be 
the skin of a, of a deceased animal. It's supposed to indicate and suggest movement and life. And this is very well done except for his broken neck. Now this, this is just, this is just ridiculous. This moose is thoroughly disgraced and, and, and very upset by this. And if he, if he could move, he'd be pitching a fit right now like nobody's business. Mainly because he knows how angry I will be after walking up all of these stairs to get to the cycle floor. But it's what I must do in the name of science. So, Godspeed to me, Mr. COVID compliant moose. We'll see you on the flip side when there's another exhibit I want to see here. So this is made to demonstrate acceleration, I guess. Holy crap. Nice. All right, here we go. <clears throat> All right. Oh. Very nice raptor. Skeleton. Fully, fully. It looks to be complete. I can't, I don't know enough about dinosaur anatomy to, to know this for sure, but it's still an impressive display. Man, a tail. Goes right into the office buildings there. Then we have mastodons like this. Amazing looking, very finely made. And I say made because I am not personally convinced this is a real skeleton. Looks pretty thrown together to me, but it's nicely done. It's just my opinion, maybe I'm wrong. Looks highly suspect to me. But hey, that's just me, I don't know anything about this. So maybe I should shut up. All right, we have come to one of the main reasons they brought me here right now. and. It's why most people come to the Buffalo Museum of Science for the taxidermy. So let's check out some majestic dead animals. In the tiki 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 room. So many tiki references here. Now, Buffalo Museum of Science, what are you doing with the Disney references? Here we have a hyena, and here we have Pumbaa, for cheap sakes. And, and Simba.
Now here actually, here we're getting into history of the museum and of my town. This, uh, this buffalo diorama here was uh, commissioned by the city of Buffalo for the Museum of Science. And this was, I'd say back in, I wanna say 1960s, maybe even the 70s. And this has stood here since then. I think it's changed locations in the museum several times. But, uh, but this is the real deal that was commissioned way back then. And again, it's one of the things I remember. I used to go on field trips to this museum as a kid with school, and I, I'll never forget this diorama. It really is a treat to see it at, at an age like this when I'm feeling, feeling kind of old. <laughs> and I can think back on when I was younger. Here we have, like I was saying, some animals in taxidermy are extremely difficult to work on, especially animals like the squirrel here. There's so many bones in a, in a squirrel's finger and it's very, very difficult to recreate that. It takes an immense amount of skill. And more birds here. And look at this, amazing, just majestic, really. There's a prairie dog, tumbleweed, prairie dog, another prairie dog, and up here, who that? I've always loved this one. Looking a little rough around the nose and mouthpiece, but he's still very cool. Yeah, he's looking a little, he needs a little work. No less terrifying when they're stuffed. <laughs> The Great American Sands Antler Jackalope. <laughs> Aye! Wow. <laughs> Let me just get in a little later. I think you got an abscess or something.
And so, having completed the taxidermy portion of our tour, we come to the reason that we came here in the first place today. Guitar, 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 guitar. All right, man. Yeah. This is amazing. It looks sleek and rocky in here. Like, 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 I feel like a rocker, man. <laughs> and it even smells like, like music. Hard to explain. And now, we're gonna see some serious guitars. All the way from the 1550s to be with us right now. I would call it a Theorbo. That could be wrong. Don't mind my Mickey Mouse cell phone case. And pay more attention to this amazing romantic guitar. The good clank. And it's still used, it looks like. What a neck, man. <laughs> what a bridge. Look at the detail. The craftsmanship. That is a spooky guitar. That is some weird, wild stuff. And it's still being used. I, I did not know that. We have a resonator guitar, which are still very much widely in use. From 1928, yeah. Sort of around the blues era, these began to be, uh, began to be used. This is all finely, finely made, real metal. Although I'd hate to be playing this near an ungrounded microphone. But perhaps I'd be truly a rock star once I did. Now here's what I was looking for, the loot. Boots are just, like, they're very interesting to me, especially the way they're made with that neck, that broken neck on the lute. I'm not sure, not sure really. Oh, it's some more notes can be played on the fingerboard. See, it's good to look at this stuff sometimes. <laughs> Again, fine wood carving there. Old standbys, the Gibson, the Les Pauls. Guitar specifically made for recording. Guess it has a lot more um, adjustments that can be made to the sound and, and whatnot. And it's wow, it's actually a pretty cool idea. Here I guess they have uh, some equipment that they've deemed old enough to be put in a museum and I'm sad to find CDs over here. <laughs> I'm, I'm really distressed that there are <laughs> CDs in this ancient piece of uh, outdated equipment category because <laughs> I remember those things. <sighs> but anyway. This is all... Yeah, like the gramophone hat, I totally understand. But, but there's CDs there, man. I can't possibly be that old.
that upsets me. <laughs> Buffalo Museum of Science, you, you done do, you, you, you done did me dirty with these CDs, man. And a floppy, I remember that too. I'm getting out here, man. Yeah, we're into the rocking guitars now. Fender Telecasters. This is for all you people who do read this history. You, you really can just pause the video and look at what it says here. And you'll find out a lot of cool stuff. Because I'm not going to read it all to you. I just ain't. Strats. Hmm. Now we're getting into looks. Now we're getting into the guitars with the looks, man. These were made to be showy. This, this is that, man. This is 80s. It's totally 80s, man. There ain't a whole lot more guitars that are more 80s, except the key car. Key tar? Key car? <laughs> no, it's not a... It was not, it was not drivable at all. It was the key tar. Maybe the only other guitar more 80s in this one. The Gibson Flying V. The Dan Electro, Danny Le, Dan Electro Longhorn. I have never heard of this one. But again, again, look, we're into the guitars with the, with the good looks, man. It's all about the looks with these. I mean, I, 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 no, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sure their playability is also very cool, and they got very cool things about playing. Now, I am not a guitar player myself, so I can only comment on how the thing looks. You might notice I've been doing that and not really talking about the technical side of playing because I don't know a dang thing about it. But I can appreciate a good looking guitar like this one. The Danny Electro Longhorn. Now, here, these, these are really cool to see. The Chet Atkins Country Gentleman guitar. Man, this is a serious. You want to play some country western music? Man, this will take you through. This will take you through that country western song you're so fond of from beginning to end. Yes, it will. It's the Gretsch Chet Atkins 6122 Country Gentleman. It's a cool Spanish guitar. And they buy a Luther in Seville. See, not just barbers come from there, people. Yeah, you'll see here the uh, that Gibson mainly manufactured mandolins for a very long time, and then they turned to sweet things like these.
the Rickenbacker Silver Hawaiian Lux Steel. <laughs> uh, I think my mask is preventing oxygen from getting into my head. <clears throat> yes, the Rickenbacker Silver Quality the Batty Show. Lap Steel Guitar. She's. This has been used, man. Wow. But still, it's completely metal. And I, and I mentioned before about uh, certain unfortunate rock stars playing guitars near ungrounded microphones or just having a serious issue with, uh, with the electricity. It's taken many, many good rockers away. And this just seems to be asking for trouble a little bit. But, you know, it's played in Hawaii, near the ocean, where, where there isn't electricity, hopefully. <laughs> Still an amazing looking guitar. And on top of that, it's electric. <laughs> and made of metal. <laughs> Whew, hot times. All right. Bing, bing, bing. And here you can actually see how the instrument is made, what goes into the craftsmanship, which is a very cool thing. And this is half a guitar. But look at that. Let's look at it the right way at the exploded acoustic. It's really been so long since I messed with a guitar. Okay, I'm satisfied. Let's take a look over here. Wow, this is a monster, holy crap. The guitaron. The guitaron, you're so big and fat. Ay, 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 with your Americano strings. Guitaron, what you do to me, huh? Now this is cool. This, like, this has uh, a lot of cool definition on the neck. These little, I don't know, I don't know, the sparkly bits on the neck. I think they look pretty. <laughs> but holy crap, look at this. <laughs> oh man. That's like so quirky and cool. Wow. Yeah, definitely a well made <laughs> well made guitar. I was not expecting that. I wasn't even like looking at that part and then I then I panned down. It's like this this has like a like an amplifier built into it. Like Nigel Tufnell's uh uh two amplifier guitar. <laughs> Spinal Tap. And I'm sure this goes up to 11 and, and further. Wow, I've never seen a guitar quite like that. 1962, that's what they were looking. They were being that avant-garde in the instruments in 1962. That's, that's, that's actually very cool. This is probably my favorite one. Wow. Now this is really, this is a really cool, really cool in the colors, the designs, almost like a, almost like an Irish thing it has going on. Very cool, the, the Tesco Kimberly Apollo Greenburst. I'll let you look at it. Are we into the Spangler guitars now? Sprinkle Spangles. Uh, we got the EKO 700. Again, perfect for like your glam, uh, your glam bands where, where the look is also just as important as the music.
got another Rickenbacker. This one's a 12 string. If we can focus, thank you. Oh, I love that, like, kind of sunburst, sunburst uh, pattern it has in the middle. And yeah, that's like a hollow, that's like a hollow area. I think, yeah, yeah. It's actually very cool. So maybe it could also function well as an acoustic with, with this little area here. I'm not sure if that was the intention. Anybody knows about, uh, about guitars, feel free to set me straight or tell me I'm full of shit or whatever. Wow. So, not good with the names. I'm not going to try it. But this is, this has been used from 1969 to the present. Very cool looking. Very nice finish on it. Very well made. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. Ah. Yep, <laughs> like so many things now, it is what it is. Now, in 1976, Goodwin came up with this guy, the Goodwin Guitar Organ. <laughs> Holy crap. There was like so many different tones and sounds you could get out of this, dude. 1976. People were rocking out to organ music played on the guitar. That's just what they were doing in the late 70s. Now you talk about a badass looking guitar. The BC Rich Warlock. Like, you gotta bow down to this guy. This is a serious instrument. Yeah. We had the Avanaz, Jam 7V, another very spiky, uh, kind of weaponish <laughs> looking guitar. Like you could do, you could do some damage to some folks with those uh, with those points, man. But still, for, for sure, for sure, kill volume. <laughs> I think the Warlock would definitely win. <laughs> like, just looking at it makes me nervous. <laughs> and it makes me all blurry. Let's see, Avanez. Yes, and we even are including video game controllers from games like Rock Band. This here looks to be uh, from the Beatles Rock Band. Uh, reproduction of uh, Paul McCartney's Hofner bass. And man, that's that's just a very cool piece. It just looks wow. That is so cool looking. And it's a game controller. You play bass on rock band with it. But but it's a complete reproduction of what he played. You know, I thought the one with the built-in app was my favorite. But I think I just, I think you just been beat. Wow. Oh, and this is based on the musician who meets the devil at the crossroads and sells a soul for the ability to play guitar like nobody's business. 
and it's a popular legend among guitar players. Several blues musicians uh, have had this legend attributed to them and it, it being about them and that's, that's why they can play so damn good. It's all because of the devil. I don't know, I've heard if you want to do good rock music, uh, you do kind of need the devil on your side. Here come the comments. Now this is the one. This is the old guy. The oldest guy in the group. From 3000 BC. The Oud. Middle Eastern music. You got guitars like this, which look okay there they look all right yeah it's a regular guitar but oh look out it's made of an armadillo the triangle and it has an armadillo chilling on the back too because it's always good to have two And some objects of day art here, like the license plate guitar. Another, another metal, electric metal thing. I, I don't know about these. Seems kind of dangerous to me. And New York plate up there. A little insight into how an electric guitar is made. Hold on, I'll get it. Wait, wait. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. Wait, wait. 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 I didn't even know it, but this museum has its own Fiji mermaid. And it is sufficiently as terrifying as any I've ever seen. But this one you can get really close to and see. And, and, and just, just, just so if anyone's confused and isn't a freak like me, this used to be displayed in freak shows like very, very often. And it's basically a monkey sewn on to the end of a fish uh, passed off as a mermaid skeleton. So that's what a Fiji mermaid is, and this is one. And it's a well-made, very cool one. Now this is cool. I did not even know anything like this was here. But uh, if you use your stylus here on the skeleton, he'll, he'll creep you out a little bit. I had no idea there was anything like this here. Alright, so we've seen some guitars, we've seen some taxidermy, and after having seen all that, really what else is there to see? So I guess that ends our day here at the Buffalo Museum of Science, but thanks for joining me, thanks for checking it out with me. 
and see you next time.